Hello, I'm Rivali with the Huntington's Outreach Project for Education at Stanford, and I'm here today to talk about genetic testing. This is Kristen. Kristen's mom had Huntington's disease, which means that Kristen has a 50% chance of inheriting the disease. Kristen is trying to decide whether she wants to find out if she will develop Huntington's disease in the future. But she wants to learn more about the testing process before she makes a decision. So she asked Hopes for help. Well, don't worry, Kristen. We're happy to help you learn more. Let's start with the basics. What is genetic testing? In order to find out whether she will develop Huntington's disease, Kristen needs to undergo genetic testing. Genetic testing is the process of getting parts of your DNA sequenced in order to detect the presence or absence of the genetic sequence that causes a specific disease. Genetic testing for Huntington's disease involves counting how many C a G repeats an individual has in the part of the genome that codes for Huntington protein. The number of repeats will determine whether a person will develop HD. Choosing to get tested is a very personal decision, and it's important to realize that there's no right answer here. Some people choose to get tested because they want to adapt their life goals and timeline if they are going to develop HD. For example, someone who has always dreamt of traveling the world may choose to get tested so that they can decide whether to travel now or later on in life. But plenty of people decide not to get tested because they don't want to change how they live their lives. Regardless of what you choose, Kristen, the HD community will support your decision, and there are support groups available throughout the country for those in the same situation as you. But before we get further into this, let's make sure you're eligible for testing. Who can get tested? Although there are no national laws that regulate who can and cannot undergo genetic testing, the Huntington's Disease Society of America has worked together with HD organizations worldwide to put together a list of guidelines that they recommend people follow. The guidelines stress the importance of informed consent, which means that the individual should understand all the risks and benefits of testing before making an independent decision. No one should be coerced into getting tested. The guidelines also recommend that minors do not get tested. This is put in place in order to protect minors from being forced into testing by a parent or guardian. While it is very rare, a doctor may recommend that an exception to this rule be made if a minor begins exhibiting symptoms of HD, in which case he or she may be developing juvenile HD. So, Kristen, are you 18 years old yet? You are? Great. Well then, let's talk a little bit about the steps leading up to genetic testing. What do I have to do to get tested? Or, the steps to testing. If you do decide to get tested, there are several preliminary sessions that you must go through first. The specific sessions may vary depending on the testing center that you go to, but most centers will require the following three steps. Step 1. Pre-test genetic counseling. If you are considering getting tested, you should first sit down with a genetic counselor. This specialist will be able to give you all the details about genetics, inheritance of HD, and the testing procedure. You can ask any questions you may have about the process during this time. This step will ensure that you fully understand the clinical and psychological implications of testing. 
thereby allowing you to give informed consent should you choose to proceed. Step 2. Neurological Examination If, after your genetic counseling, you decide to move forward and get tested, the next step is to undergo a clinical exam to see if you are already showing any symptoms of HD. A physician, such as a neurologist, will check your movements, reflexes, hearing, and balance, and may ask you to get some brain scans and imaging done to check whether you have already experienced the onset of HD without your knowledge. If an individual is found to be symptomatic, they are diagnosed with HD and may choose to continue with the testing process to confirm this diagnosis. Step 3. Psychological Interview The final pre-testing step is a psychological interview. During this phase, you will sit down with a medical professional such as a psychiatrist who will be assessing your emotional and mental state. Counseling support services are made available as the psychiatrist checks to see if you will be able to properly deal with the test results that you are preparing to receive. Although this is the last pre-testing step, there is typically a waiting period between this and the actual test so that the patient has the chance to consider the implications of testing and come to a final decision regarding whether to move forward with it or not. The actual test itself. Once you've gone through all the pre-testing steps, if you choose to move forward with testing, you'll be relieved to know that the test itself involves a simple blood draw. The blood sample is then sent to a lab where it is tested to determine the number of CAG repeats present in the part of your genome that codes for Huntington protein. The lab will typically use techniques such as PCR and gel electrophoresis to determine how many CAG repeats you have in that region. Potential Test Outcomes In most cases, you will have to meet with a genetic counselor to get your test results. If at any point after the blood draw, you decide that you do not want to know the results anymore, you do have the right to decide not to receive your test results. If you do change your mind, be sure to contact your physician or genetic counselor to let them know your decision. If, however, you do choose to know your test results, then it is important that you understand that there are several possible outcomes. Negative. A negative test results means that the number of CAG repeats present in the region of interest in your genome is considered to be in the normal range. This means that you do not carry the genetic mutation and that you will not develop Huntington's disease. Individuals who receive a negative test result are also not at risk of passing HD on to any children they may have. Positive. A positive test result means that your test revealed that you have an abnormally high number of CAG repeats. This result means that you do carry the HD allele and will eventually develop Huntington's disease. If you receive a positive test result, it is important to remember that age of onset, disease progression, and symptoms vary from person to person and that your genetic test result does not provide any information about these aspects of HD. Individuals who test positive do have a 50% chance of passing HD on to each individual child they may have. Uninformative. An uninformative test result occurs when the CAG repeat length falls in a range that lies in between that exhibited by individuals without HD and individuals with the disease. Researchers are still trying to figure out 
exactly what occurs for people with this intermediate CAG repeat length, and it is currently unclear whether these individuals will develop HD or not. Approximately 1 to 4 percent of those who get tested receive an uninformative test result. Post-testing Upon receiving your test results, your genetic counselor may recommend further post-test counseling to help you better understand and cope with the clinical and psychological implications of your test result. Regardless of what your test results are, it's important to know that there are many support groups and resources available for patients and families affected by HD. To learn more about these resources and for more information on Huntington's disease, please visit our website at hopes.stanford.edu.